Six second pre-roll at. Glad it was at least, yeah, short. Yes, we are starting off with Nico. I was able to get her fifth star, which was nice because this was locking off several other upgrades. So I was able to get the Star of Discovery. And not using my Wild Fragments to get this yet, but nice we have the other parts of the constellation now unlocked. Yeah, I figured we'd play play some Nico today to start off. I do want to test this. It's not top on my priority list, but whenever I like look at it, it's like that is interesting. Would be fun to play. Could really change up how you how you end up playing Nico. You like you could potentially go for Crown Guard because you can often get Nico leveled. Especially later on in the game, like round one. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Hello, happy potato. Yeah, the 10 moon terror crystals. It was like we could go for Aatrox or we could go for Nico. And while I like Aatrox, if we look at his constellation, his uh, mana flow was over here, which it's nice that it's out of the way. But I just figured it would be better to be able to get mana flow and then get some other upgrades. Yeah, sadly for Aatrox, some of the, especially gems, are like hidden behind. Like, it's a little annoying what they do. The only good gems that I'd want to get would be the ones that are for a region. So, like here, XP for Rune Terra Champions, or four regen for Rune Terra Champions. Like these, if I ever get enough gems, I would want to get. These ones on the side, though, it's like I don't really care about just slightly buffing up Aatrox. Good morning. I want to know the best epic rare relic combos for three star Nasus. Um, Nasus is a. Tough one. Frozen Tomb is solid on him. Portal Pals isn't bad. It can be pretty fun because it can trigger with Frozen Tomb. Frozen Tomb, if you have baseline two mana, will trigger when you get five mana. So you're technically being able to get Nasus on the board one round early. Portal Pals is able to trigger, which gives you two big units that are reduced down. One problem is, though, Shirima has some of the worst units for Portal Pals. So unlike Viega, where you want to stay in your region, with Nasus, you actually want to get into other regions because you have a higher chance of getting something good. Secret Technique is pretty fun, especially if you want to go for a build really focusing on your Siphoning Strike, since that is able to double the uh, stats you gain. So if you really want to scale up your champions, uh, that's pretty good. You could always go for just like a Stalker's Blade so that when he gets summoned, he still gets a strike off, potentially levels immediately. Uh, that wouldn't be terrible. Overall, though, for Nasus, he's one that I've tried a whole bunch of different builds. And while there's different ones that work out fine, I've never found like the perfect Nasus build. I'm like, oh, yeah, this this just feels great. So that's a little bit a little bit sad. Yeah, gems. Some of them can feel pretty bad. I mean, there's some of them that actually feel solid to get. I think it might have been with Caitlyn. Yeah, with Caitlyn, I actually had enough to get one. So just flat one reroll for all PNC champs. Really good. And also, yeah, they've kind of learned that they're not locking constellations or some of them behind too many annoying things. I mean, the gemstones are still locked, but at least... A lot of the five and six stars and even four stars are out of the way now, which is pretty nice. All right, so we're going to go for our uh, Nico today. We have 
a lot of the constellation. But let's just go over what we have. So each round, the first ally you play with a different subtype, then other allies cost you less. Plus one starting mana, game start for each ally in your deck. That if it is a subtype, grant it. Ah, goodness, grant it impact. Otherwise, it becomes a shape shift shifter, so it gets a subtype. Uh, survey core game starts summoning green glade lookout so this is just giving us a another subtyped unit as well as someone that can give us more cost reduction and then the mana flow we don't have the six star so he's a very versatile champ you can utilize tons of relics depending on the play style i mean that's one way to look at it or he's a very bad champion that struggles to find anything that really works too good for him <laughs> talk about nasus hello a difficulty tweak glad you're able to make the stream we're just gonna uh showcase our nico today as far as the bonus stars got a good amount of these so reroll in gold uh support champs have dragon's tooth just so again they get a another subtype helping you level up a little bit faster uh bone hide tri tail has skirmishing saber a bit on the less impactful side like this is your big overwhelm unit so it is the best that this has challenger out of everyone but compared to like a lot of the ephemeral decks that have challenge on their ephemeral units, yeah, not as good. And then the one we were able to pick up yesterday, all these different subtypes, like all the animal ones, pretty much. Those type of followers who acquire adventures have studded leather, which I kind of wish this was just subtyped units you find in adventures. Like they narrowed this one, which is kind of sad. Whereas with some of the other champions, like Caitlyn that we recently saw, they intentionally made things broad where it's just any traps have like triple damage and stuff like that. Where this, they kind of narrowed it down, which is a little sad. But I get trying to focus on the, the animals, I guess. As far as the build, we're going to try. So we're going to go for Beast Within, pretty much made for Nico. Allies have Overwhelm if they have a subtype 1 1. With Nico, we need to try to be ending the game as soon as possible. We can normally out-tempo our enemies with all of our cost reduction and cheap units, as well as the fact like we're getting this overwhelm, we're getting impact. So we need to try to end fast. Beast Within is perfect for that. Spectral Scissors giving Nico a little bit more power, summoning a, another unit, and then Corrupted Star Fragment to try to consume all the stats on that unit and then buff up our Nico. So just going for a very aggressive build. Note these have to be in this order so that this activates first and then the Corrupted Star Fragment. Otherwise, the Corrupted Star Fragment would just kill the unit. So we're going to take this, and we're going to try Lissandra, which could be a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, we might go up top to try to get the Spell Shield. That could be pretty good for us. But yeah, Lissandra isn't necessarily great for Nico, but I figured we haven't done Lissandra in a little bit. Uh, before we go in, though, we'll just take a quick little... Uh, breaks so if everyone anyone needs to get a drink quickly go to the bathroom go ahead and do that right now you have a minute and a half hello psycho <laughs> gotta drink my nice tea Slowly getting better. Today is hopefully the last day that I'll still feel the remnants of being sick. It's mostly gone, but still there, still there a little bit. Uh, we can we can load in while we wait. Oh, they really did do a good job with the artwork here. Probably gonna lurk. Good luck on the run. Sounds good, Peach. Oh, it will be interesting to see when we get a new adventure. I'm kind of surprised we haven't gotten one already. When they dropped the Swain adventure, it seemed like we'd get another one pretty soon. Um... I prefer the, the Swain adventure. It's just the champions we're playing, I think, would get stomped by Swain. So, yeah, I'm not really on board with that. 
I think a lot of people might like the Lissandra Adventure better just because it came out first and people knew how to deal with the Lissandra Adventure. All right, everyone should be back. So let's see. Lissandra has all things grow cold. All right, tough, but not the worst. Let's go ahead and go for a support champion here. All right, LeBlanc, that doesn't have any keywords. She does have Fury. Reborn Grenadier. Roar of the Slayer. This having cost reduction is not bad. Cultist is a subtype, and it's a subtype we don't actually get very often. So that's not necessarily the worst. It has sustain both from Vampiric Scepter and the Lifesteal. We could potentially take that Lifesteal and uh, put that on our Nico. Yeah, I think since Cultist isn't normally that easy to get of a subtype, I think we will actually grab Kane. We summon a one cost ally granted 2-2. Two, two. I think this counts for zero cost as well, right? If you're below a one cost, it still works. Doesn't it? No, I don't think so. No, only one. Oof. That's... I thought they were converting all zero and two star personal adventures. Uh, they haven't confirmed that they're converting all of them, but they said that that is something they can do for adventures. So Yips is kind of bad in that regard, because often a lot of what we're going to be playing is going to be like zero costs. And so there's a lot of things we're actually not going to get the benefit from, but there's others like the wallop that will give us it. Hmm. That could be good, but it could also be kind of rough for us. I think we'll try to get something a little bit more consistent. Yeah, not proccing on zero cost hurts the discount decks. This should... They should try to change this so it uh, works for zero costs. Enfeebling, slow but steady, shield. I don't think we have any slow spells. We're not going to play that many spells, so shields aren't really going to help. I think we'll just grab Enfeebling. Really solid defensive power. Can really help us in some later games. Alright, low rolled that gold. Alright, so not seeing a lot of subtypes. Like, sure there's that, but that's pretty expensive. It is a 7 cost, so we could play it as a 5 cost. But there's probably cheaper ways to get the Celestial keyword, and we're already going to have the Dragon keyword. Like, it is a cheap capture, which is nice. Oh, this actually isn't bad. So I cost 1, and my base stats are 1-1, one, one, I'm a Poro. We're not losing that many stats, but this would then give us Cultist and Poro keywords. So, sure. We can grab that. We have multiple ways to get Fury, but being able to have Spider and Fury here isn't bad as well. Sure. I think we'll probably save our rerolls and potentially try to get... Um, go up and get the Spell Shield. I think we'll get this just as a cheap capture. That is pretty good. So yeah, we'll save our rerolls and... Let's go up top. Yeah, top looks like the best. So, Omenhawk. Give me five-star Nautilus adventure. That would be interesting. Especially since I've played so much Nautilus. <laughs> like, that's where I level people for the first time. It would be fun. All right, let's get rid of the Lodestone. And I think even the Tritail for now. Uh, this is 5-star Nico. We don't have the 6-star. Alright, so we didn't get our main champion. Feels a little bad. 
we could actually drop an immediate cane. Does have the darken keyword. Sure, let's just try to capture that unit. Alright, that's perfectly fine with us. Not bad. Hmm, this is a three cost. Didn't this used to cost more? I thought this was like a five cost. Am I going crazy? I might be crazy. I thought that cost more. Uh, let's go for the Crested Lionhawk. Was always three. I think it used to be four. See, I... I thought it used to be four because I thought, like, I would consider doing a... Grand Channel's counter build with it. But it's like, even with Archangel's Staff, it's still not enough. It was a four cost. Uh, I think... I think it used... I... Pretty sure I remember it costing four. <laughs> All right, so Poro and Cultist, Dog. Uh, I think we'll actually go here just because we want to get the extra draw. Although being able to use our wallop wouldn't be wouldn't have been bad to go for the Cultist. Peralt would have been a better call. Okay, so if we kill this unit, the other unit's gonna get reset from the capture, so that's actually not terrible. Uh, sure, we can drop this. Oh, it's not that big of a unit. Uh, can drop Kane again. Sure, let's drop this. Yes, yours. That's an. Are they seriously attacking like this? Huh. The AI is making some questionable decisions, to say the least. All right, I think let's just attack. We can just stun these two so it doesn't matter where they block because we have Overwhelm. And that should be game. Unless they Frostbite us or something, but... Yeah, I think we're good. I love stun plus Overwhelm. It's the best. Patch 410, mana cost reduced from 3 to... Uh, two, three, from four. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I must have missed that change. Or didn't implant itself in my memory like the four cost did. I was like, man, I was sure this card used to cost more. Uh, Yordle, we already have that keyword. Cultist, we already have that. Or we have some of this, but... Yeah, another one's not terrible. Yeah, we probably should have just gone with the yips just to be safe. Strike draw one, tough. I think let's do strike draw one. Make sure we don't run out of cards. Yeah, let's try to do that. All right, trapper. So we have to deal with their captures. I love how you see the Yeti in the background. <laughs> oh, it's great. All right, let's get rid of Lodestone. Cultist, Spider, Dog. All pretty good. Each one of these gives us two different tags or subtypes. All right, so we'll drop Nico and we'll just Played Nico as Nico because the shapeshifter tag will be good for us. Right, I'm just. 
Oh, man. So the one rule for the trapper is you always pass first. Although we always had something to capture, so it kind of didn't matter, but... Oh, yeah. There's a problem with reading chat and not 100% focusing on the game. All right. Bird. Draw. I think let's go here and reduce down that one's power a bit. Uh, yeah, we'll go for the, the cub. Get some more draw going. We'll probably play just both copies here. We want to play the Bonehide Tritail, but we don't want it to immediately get captured. So I think we will... Go ahead and pass. They normally play something. Okay. Well, that's still not a unit, though, so... Okay, so that counts. It's a summon effect, eh? Yeah, summons. All right, let's go for our Bone Hide Tritail. All right, so we can kill that. And then, yeah, just attack like this. Trapper and Frostbite encounter are really annoying. I think you mean the, the Shaman, and yes, that is pretty bad. His fire burns bright in our hearts. All right, I... Hmm. I think let's drop this here. I forge in his name. And we will stun this. We want to keep our Nico alive. Just another winter. <laughs> All right, so here we're going to attack before they can play anything. Nika will make another copy of this and also consume its stats. And then we'll attack with these. We need to leave one space open for the other Sorin. Alright, this will level us and hopefully be game. Hello, name. Oh, Nico, I haven't seen her or gotten her in any way or shape, so curious how she works. She's a interesting one. GG. Why Kane? Uh, because he gives us the Cultist and the Darkin subtypes, which are normally ones that can be a little bit more difficult for you to get on Nico. Uh, reptile, allies have a different subtype than other allies. Play cost one less. This would be pretty good. We could drop this early, just get some more flat cost reduction going. Yeah, we have this subtype, but only like one other card has it. I think, is it just the Soren? Yeah, I think it's just the Glacial Soren. Hello, service. Uh, hmm. I think we might do everyone a favor and just turn off the dialogue for this one. You have two? Not sure what you mean. Uh, let's go for the Alpha Wildclaw. Shouldn't she get Studded Leather? Uh, she's not one of the subtypes listed, so sadly no. I 
I think let's... Yeah, get rid of a couple of these. Since we already have the Poro here, this one's not as important. And we're going to get the Poro here. We're trying to make sure we get our champion. If you're saying we have two Kane, that's just because that's what you get when you get a support champion. Uh, let's... Yeah, drop this. Just play as Shapeshifter still, because we're not really getting that. Uh, we can go for... Yeah, we can drop this here. So... Could attack. Which would help our level up. We could consume some things like... The Yordle. This one can at least attack. This one wouldn't get the lifesteal and it would die. But it would give us like one away from leveling. Could keep blockers. And let's try to be aggressive. It wouldn't be bad just to hold back and potentially wait for blockers. But I think let's be aggressive here. Uh, Curious Changelings isn't in the deck. It's funny that the Wild Claw has a lot of the same cards we do, apparently. Ah, uh, sure. Let's drop our cane, get that capture off. And we can, yeah, drop a cat. And we should be able to level up now. All right, and that looks like it's going to be game. Nice. What do you think about Nico, Nico Six Star? I find it intriguing. I haven't actually been able to play with it, but I think it should further help you be just super aggressive and rush down a lot of enemies very quickly. Nice. GG. I think it'll be one that is good. I don't think it'll be... It'll probably be like mid-tier, like strong, but not insane. My fastest time with Lissandra is actually three-star Nico. Wow, nice. All right, we already have a dog. Combat reel isn't terrible. Because, like, that's a lot of stats to throw on anyone. That should be getting... I guess we won't see it here. This should be getting... Um, our studded leather, though. Because this is an animal we're acquiring... This is a follower we are acquiring that does have the keyword dog. Dog should be one of them. So yeah, that should have extra stats on it. Hmm, this... Is Nico's bonus star not working? Huh. I think we'll go this because we have some synergies with equipment and this is also just a lot of stats. Can help us when we fill out our entire board. Hmm. All right, let's try to go up top. Honored Lord does seem actually great. Uh, don't really care about Reckoners. Don't want to die immediately. We have a lot of ways to get Fury, but having it on our Nico so we can try to level round one would be great. All right, Remitter, we would like to get Spell Shield. Unstoppable Force is kind of funny. But, yeah, not exactly what we're looking for. 
All right, sad. Round end, grant all units two power. Round start, summon a cost to cast. Stun the strongest and weakest unit. Uh, grant all units two power. It's actually not bad. This could help us because we're more likely to have more units on the board than the enemy, especially early. So, yes, I think let's actually risk and get this. All right, let's go for a power. When ally dies, grants power to unit in hand. Drawing a card is not terrible. I guess we are going to have some ephemerals die. So, sure, we can drop this here, I guess. And let's go for Inquisitor. <coughs> How are you from having all champs at five stars or more? Um, a lot. Like, I have a pretty good amount, but there's a decent amount of star crystals that I don't have, so it's going to take me a while to actually get everything. Let's get rid of a couple of these. I mean, it's really going to depend on what Riot does as far as when they add in a event pass. Let's just do play Nico normally. Also, what they do with whatever their target farming system is, because we still have no idea what that actually is. So this is two. This is two. This is draw on it. So with what we have right now in game, it's going to take me a long time to be able to get everyone to five and six stars. All right, let's just attack, get some damage down. Just got my ace to three stars. Nice. Uh, we will hold off. All right, this is great to get on the board. Give us cost reduction on all of our other units. We're kind of just waiting for them to play some things because we have like these captures ready to go. So we could give this to Nico or we could give this to someone else and then have Nico consume them to kind of lock in those stats. I think that let's do that right here. All right, good chance we do get Frostbitten, which will be a little sad. We need to leave one. Actually, no, we're good. Here, didn't have a full board. All right, so if they don't Frostbite us, then GG, but probably a Frostbite incoming. I'm comfortable doing my 10 monthlies a day, unlike someone. Oh, yeah, if only. GG. I prefer doing the 10 monthlies a day. Does the subtype involves has Fury keywords? The Fury does count as a subtype, yes. Because it says Fury and I am a dragon. So if you have the dragon's tooth upgrade, then yeah, it counts. Huh, Yeti. That's a keyword we don't have. But yeah, some of these... Poro, I think, was also one of them, so... Okay, yeah, the Nico Constellation. Apparently it's bugged. Because both of these should be getting uh, studded leather. I think we'll go for the Poro Fly. This one is just a little bit too expensive. Not a little bit, it's a lot too expensive. Champion item, Strike, Draw 1. We already have the Dragon Tooth. We're normally playing it for free. Yeah, we can go for the draw. Sometimes we are lacking that a little bit. Uh, deal two to all units. I am inevitable. Yeah, I don't think I feel like going up top. Let's just go for the Poro Sled. 
Did 65 monthlies a day, was healthy. Yeah. Let's... Yeah, go right here. Alright, pretty big unit. And they're probably going to immediately attack. Yeah, let's drop the Forge Chief to immediately capture that. Kind of wasting our cost reduction a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, let's just go for Nico. This is the one that, yeah, when they attack, they summon another Poro, so we want to keep them from attacking, if at all possible. So this gives us more cost reduction, but this gives us a massive unit that can really buff up our Nico. So I think let's actually play this here. Silence of Follower, I feel like that could be pretty nice. All right, let's attack like this. Uh, we might... Do we care about stunning that unit? We could silence it. I feel like we probably should wait, though. I think we might just keep the Forge Chief back. We don't want them to get this unit. Yeah, the extra damage I don't think is worth it. Alright, pretty good damage. So we won't be able to keep them from attacking. But we do have some good ways to kind of mess with them. Is a big unit. Buff everyone else up. Sure. Yeah, I think we can... Well, this will give us another blocker. Sure, we'll stun this. Uh, let's silence this unit. Uh, we could actually use a Poro... Both of our pores are dying. Sure. So let's go right here. So really, they're only getting one impact damage in. All right, I think let's just immediately attack, and this should be enough to end Oh, GG. <gasps> Oof. Well, that's unfortunate, but still enough to end. This is why I hate Wallop, or I uh, hate Nab. Did all my monthlies in two days and threw up. Yeah, definitely don't. Don't do that. <laughs> That's not selling a good time. Uh, so neither of these necessarily great. Grave companions, okay. I think I'd rather deal with Orn than Anivia. Sure, that can be fine. Although Celestials isn't bad. Yeah, I think we'll still drop a mobilize. Weapon Master, that's something we don't have. Ghost is something we don't have. This is useless. 
I think let's go for the Weapon Master. And yeah, elusive, this can be really good because it's not only giving us elusive, it's also giving us an epic item. And even though this is temporary for the round, we could potentially consume whatever gives this with our Corrupted Star Fragment. So yeah, I think we can grab this here. And sure, let's grab this item right here. All right, Smooth Soloist, Epic Champion item. <laughs> Probably go for the Champion item. All right, let's go for Orn with Secrets Hidden by Frost. <laughs> Says a person that did them all in one day. Yes, but I didn't throw up. So, <laughs> if you're pushing yourself of being sick, you shouldn't do them. I was fine. Uh, this is... Okay. All right, let's drop our Nico first. Could go for the stun. Which... I mean, you still keep all your items. So, sure. So I think we'll drop the web spinner because then we'll still have enough for the wallop. All right, if they're willing to end, I am fine with that. So we could equip this. We could then make an ephemeral copy of it. Get an epic item. Let's... It's going to be a bit random, but this could be... Kind of crazy. Double attack. Nice. Let's go ahead and drop one of these just to kind of mess with their giant unit there. Uh, do we want the Green Glade Lookout to attack? We don't have enough to block... I think we might just attack with Nico and then these two units. Yeah, let's go and try to do a bunch of damage and then just survive until next round. We want to go into Lissandra with full health. All right, we'll go ahead and end here. Just work on building out our board. Although they just dropped that, so let's drop another Forge Chief to get to capture that unit, get rid of their equipment. We can stun this one because it has Overwhelm. Uh, we can block some of these here.
No, no, it's bad. All right, let's go for the plucky squire. And let's go for the combat reel here. We can attack, consume the elusive, and then that will be game. All right, this should be game. Uh, we just have Nico at five stars. We don't have her at six stars. Yep, GG. Nice. The Mana Gem is very good for Nico, being able to just get some extra units out in the very beginning. Because since you're such an early game aggressive deck, having that extra one starting mana is a pretty big deal. All right, looks like uh, Ad just dropped, so we will uh, hold off for everyone. If anyone needs to go get a drink or anything, go ahead and do that now. Those of you that aren't in the ad, that is. <laughs> uh, this will be nice, though. We can drop or get our Sorin to be a little bit lower. We'll probably go for an epic item on our champion. We don't have spell shield, though, so Lissandra might just really shut us down. Which turbo OP? Nice. <laughs> yeah, this will really come down to luck, unfortunately. We have a really good kit. We're putting on a lot of early game damage. But if Lissandra is just able to consistently shut us down with Frostbites and Tombs, there's not going to be too much we can do to stop it. So, really it's going to come down to luck, which is kind of an annoying thing with Lissandra. 10 Nova Shards away from a Crystal for Shirima. Who do you think I should go for? Kaisa seems fun. Yeah, I would probably go for Kaisa. I mean, I really enjoy the Kaisa one. But haven't tested Shirima or the... Talia, but I would I would say Kaisa's probably better. All right, let's get the cost reduction here. Let's go for the champion item chest. Mana deposit. Sure, we've been offered this dragon's tooth like three times. We we'll go for mana deposit. Yeah, that could be solid. This is really just going to come down to luck of whether or not Lissandra shuts us down, but we'll do our best. Able to clear pretty much the entire adventure up to Lissandra pretty easily. This is fine. We could pass for them to play something. Uh, <laughs> sure. All right, we will drop this first, get that cost reduced. We'll drop our Nico because we can play her for free. Although, the next card we play is going to give us the cost increase. Uh, let's drop the ghost here. All right, we got double attack. That's great. So we will consume this and be able to attack and try to get a bunch of damage down. And yeah, we won't bother with the green glade lookout. We'll need this as a blocker. Yeah, 
And yeah, we get tons of draw because of the double attack, and we have two of the strike draw one. <laughs> Normally that's fine. But considering we have the cost increase, that might become a problem. All right, I think here, let's drop the mobilize because it's going to hit so many units. Nice. That's, that's great. Um, yeah, I think we'll just block Lissandra. We could use the shape splitter here to try to reduce down some damage. But the epic item would go on the wrong person. I think we'll just take this hit. Is it worth for Kais to go Guardian Orb, Titanic for four starting mana? Or the three relics better? Uh, depends on if you ever had six stars, then no, it is not worth doing that. If you ever below that amount, then the extra starting mana can be very nice. Let's drop this. Let's drop our lifesteal unit. We could go ahead and capture the Lissandra. The one issue is this unit is going to die very easily, meaning they get their Lissandra back. Although they have an Entomb. If we capture Lissandra, there's a chance that they then can't entomb us, which would be good. But with their one mana, they could immediately get their Lissandra back with an Ice Shard. Hmm. Does their Ice Shard actually cost three? I thought it cost one. Maybe that's the fleeting one they make when she's leveled. Yeah, okay. Let's try to do this just so we maybe don't get entombed next round. Even though grabbing their Lissandra like that isn't necessarily the best. All right, so I would like to give this unit lifesteal to be able to attack. They aren't at the nine mana, so they shouldn't be able to do a buried in ice. A lot of this stuff is faster burst, so we're going to have to play this just a little bit slower because the payoff is going to be great if we can get it to work, but this could be bad. All right, so yeah, all of these dying. So yeah, we're not going to get the life seal back. They're going to get a Lissandra. All right, what got hit with... All right, so he could capture their Frost Guard. They still have their Entomb, so they could still... Oh, they could still Entomb us. If we drop Kane and capture their Frost Guard, they could immediately Entomb our Kane, get their Frost Guard back, and level their Lissandra. All right, this one has Spell Shield. I think we'll drop this here, but there's just so many ways we get shut down. All right, yep, there's the Entomb. And we can't stop it. Yes, we could try to dodge the Entomb with the Champion spell, but we're still not gonna be in a great spot then. Because we could, we have to wait for them to cast it. We could pause and wait for them or pass and they might just immediately not do anything. Let's kill their Lissandra. We don't want those fleeting ice shards. We can attack with the Frostcoat Cub. Any damage he does, 
is going to get reduced down from our enfeebling. So he's going to be able to stop more damage by attacking and reducing them down by being able to block because they have overwhelm. Also, any damage is going to hit our other units. The inheritance will buff up some of our other units, so that can be pretty impactful. Alright, so we need to drop Arcane to get a capture off. Uh, he's not going to reduce down all of that damage. So this would take 20. The one thing I'm thinking with Shape Splitter is to capture another one of these units. But we then immediately release them, which could be an issue. All right, I'll be at 25. Technically still alive. Yeah, I think we can go like this. Sure, let's drop this Crested Lionhawk. Let's curse them with suppression. That way we can open attack and they won't be able to do anything. Because this is focus speed. If we immediately attack, they are screwed. Alright, so we are going to go like this. We are going to Ghost Arcane. They won't be able to block. They won't be able to play any spells. Screw you, Lissandra, and that should be GG. Ooh. Well, that was satisfying. <sighs> well, still able to come with a win there. That was tough. <sighs> Nico is quite a lot of fun. Very fun early game champion. They can put a lot of pressure on. Still not great into Lissandra, though. Have to get pretty lucky. But, yeah, if you like to just focus on all of your keywords, or not keywords, but your subtypes, focus on getting as many units out on the board early. Sadly, we were able to find that she is bugged. One of the upgrades for her star powers uh, that is supposed to be able to give you studded leather on a lot of the units you acquire isn't happening. It's like these Poros, these should have studded leather. Uh, so yeah, we didn't get that there. And then I think there are some other ones that we at least saw, even if we didn't pick up. So sadly, another bug star power, or star of bounty, as I think it's called. Hopefully they fix that uh, next patch. <sighs> well, that was slightly stressful there. All right, I think let's. I think go for Ash. Still not really happy with a lot of the builds for her because I just keep thinking of the downsides. The biggest thing is so with our Ash, we have her at five stars. Any build we come up with is going to be completely useless once we get her to six stars because then you can just go like triple gate breaker anyway some of the upgrades uh that we have the very oh not there the very nice four star reroll in gold uh flash freeze is mana potion so a little bit cheaper uh support champs have stalker's blade which again will be better once you get the six star and then 
uh, the fifth star. Echoing Spirit, I'm a little bit mixed on. For one, this can make our Flash Freeze cause or uh, cost one mana. So that's fun. But with Ash, you can have an issue where the only thing you have is Flash Freeze and you're shuffling and making that your entire deck, but then you're not drawing any of your other cards. And Ash doesn't have a lot of draw. So it can have a downsize. Because like we might be able to yeah, blast a whole bunch of these one cost Flash Freeze but then we just run out of things to play incredibly quickly. So, not, not the best. Like, it has, it's good, but it has downsides. Ash versus Lissandra, I don't know. I'm not sure where I want to play her yet. Tried Ash with Triple Gatebreaker with the 6 star and 6.5 Nightmare. I lost to the first encounter, Hextech. That's surprising. Yeah, so a lot of things I'm thinking for Ash aren't really needed. Like Death's Foil, we're already frostbiting people when we attack. Cease and Desist, we're not getting into the 10 power. Same with like uh, Chosen. Given our units, Overwhelm can be nice, so the Beast Within, if we were getting on the board earlier and getting a lot of challenges in, not bad, but if you just want to avoid the enemies, that's also solid. I had the best Ash Lissandra adventure, got the spell that kills all Frostbitten, wiped the whole board, including the Watcher and one on the open attack. Yeah, that's always great to be able to get. Yeah, Ash is one of those champions that I can make builds for her that are fine, but there's never any that really click as being like, oh, this is the build. Like her old one, which is still si fine and solid for her, was just like Grand Gels, Counter Plan, and Archangels, and then you could throw on something else like Overwhelm or Challenger. She seems to only have one and only build. What about loaded dice? That could be interesting. <coughs> Gale Force. I mean, we could also go for just like a Starforge build, potentially. Not that it's as needed. Like, I think Fear Cleaving Axe works for it. Death's Foil we could use, not that it's really as needed. Could go for the Deadly Harpoon for Power and Challenger. So we could just start with like four mana at the very beginning. Yeah, Beast Within can be good to make sure you can challenge enemy units and start getting kills. And yeah, I've done turn one Ash before with like the Swain's Raven Army and the Packed Powder. It felt fine before. Now, before I did these two, plus the Echoing, to get a whole bunch of her champion spell. Seven damage plus spirit doesn't work for Titanic. Huh. Okay, I thought I heard that it did, but I haven't actually tested it myself, so... That's possible. I think let's actually test this out. So one thing I tested earlier playing turn one Ash, and you would have an issue where you'd be frostbiting a lot of enemies, and since you're playing Ash turn one, she's not leveled when you are playing her. So enemies are still able to block you, 
and so you are actually getting blocked out fairly often and you might be killing the units but a lot of your damage is getting wasted so the beast within is better if you're trying to play her earlier I've managed to get the 7 attack plus spirit one time, literally one game. Alright, well, let's... I don't really want to change that. <laughs> Build. Yeah, Kaisa's 5 out of 5. All right, so we'll test this out uh, quickly. So we're at five power. Two more from the Deadly Harpoon takes us to seven. The Spirit takes us to eight to be Titanic. Let's see if we get the extra mana. We're not actually playing like a game. We're just hopping into a match to see if this activates. How did Nico go? Nico went well. We were able to come away with a clutch win at the very end. So yeah, we're at eight and it didn't activate. Potentially if we had the attack token, maybe that's how it calculates. GG. Alright, so yeah, it's... If it does work, it doesn't work consistently. So I don't know if there's maybe like, if you order it the exact way, and if you start with the attack token, then it's able to uh, trigger. But yeah, at least there we just saw, yeah, the spirit doesn't count for the Titanic. You hit Titanic, but it triggers after it checks for the mana. All right, anyways. Uh, let's go back to Ash. You try loaded dice on Ash. I want to see if it's a good relic. I don't think I'm going to try it on Ash. I think I'll try it on Darius. All right, let's actually try to go for this early game aggressive build and see how it does. This could be interesting, could be bad. We're kind of just testing here. I don't really want to deal with Lissandra again. <laughs> How do the weekly nightmares seem? Um, sure. Let's just, we'll hop in here. First, we'll change the stream title. All right, so yeah, we'll test this out. And I think we'll drop a uh, quick ad break because I'm going to go to the bathroom. If you need to go to the bathroom, get a drink, go ahead and do that right now. You have a minute and a half. All right, we are back.
I think Loaded Decks Vex would be good since she actually is decent. She actually is very shop dependent because of good spells. Hmm. Actually, that gives me a thought. Grab the drink as requested. Perfect. So you actually made me think of something, uh, Lurker. Maybe we should go and try, not right now, uh, but pairing stacked deck with loaded dice. That way we can try to have more money in the shop. And if that 10% chance is noticeable, you're then getting, you have more money to spend on good items. Yeah, that could be interesting. All right, let's see what we get for a power here. Slow but steady. With domination. So domination is good for our build of being able to attack constantly. Slow but steady. The main reason to get it is if we get that slow spell later that frostbites everyone and then um, kills everyone that's frostbitten. So that is really good. But I think since we're trying to go for this early game aggressive build, we'll go for the domination. All right, Mist Wraiths or Mist Wraith. The dream of a shopaholic build. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. All right, let's. This is OK. All right, we'll drop this uh, first, just to bait out anything they might have. All right, so the plan is to try to just be attacking every single round and then grabbing any units they play that get frostbitten and just constantly killing them. All right, Rhyme Fing Wolf. They're going to play their spell. Oh, Spirit Journey. Okay, I guess. Yeah, getting the rally is actually kind of perfect for us. Okay, I guess they just had the worst luck. Okay, <laughs> GG, I guess. I do think loaded dice, uh, loaded dice and stacked deck would go well together. Yeah, I think I should. I wrote that down in my notes. I'm probably going to try that. Maybe I'll put both of those on Darius. That'll be interesting. Uh, getting more of our archer is good. Uh, the arena actually wouldn't be terrible for us, but yeah, let's go for the Ice Veil Archer. All right, come on, Freljord. Uh, no. No. <laughs> Not really a fan of any of these, to be honest. Let's do a reroll. Aurelia, Formless Blade isn't bad. Double Strikes, that's kind of funny. Yeah, let's go for Aurelia. Double Strikes is pretty hilarious. Slot bots. We want to go for our champion item. We want more copies of our Ash. Let's go for Dawn Speakers. If Epic Relic could stack triple Star Forged on Ace, it would be great. Yeah. What do you feel really needs a remake in Path of Champions? Uh, the biggest thing they need to do to improve the game is what they've already said they're going to do. For one, event passes, those getting added back or battle passes is going to be fantastic. If we can have regular battle passes where, for one, the free tier actually has stuff for people to use in Path of Champions, but then also for those of us that want to support the game and just drop like $10 every month or whatever and get a whole bunch of rewards, battle passes are going to be great. It's something that you can grind towards. You're constantly feeling like you're getting rewards. It just makes the game feel a lot more rewarding. It's going to really help the economy because right now 
getting like five and six stars is too slow. And a battle pass could really fix that. So adding that in and making it good, making it so that even if people can't buy the like premium tier, they can still feel like they're getting good rewards for the free tier. I feel like that getting added will be one of the best things. And that should be happening soon. We don't know when, but they've been talking about it for a long time. And based on what they've said, that should be one of the the next like big upgrade that we get or update should be that. So hopefully soon. And then later in the year, from what they've said, we should get some way to target farm. We have no details on what that is, but like those two things getting added in is going to make the game feel way, way better. So I think that is going to be a big improvement to the game. And they're already trying to do it. How about a ranking system? I don't think that's really needed. <coughs> Infinity Adventure feels good too. An Infinity Adventure would be interesting. Yeah, just adding more stuff to the game. All right, let's get rid of Defiant Dance, Shared Spoil, and Wild Claw. We want a lot of our early game units. All right, nice. We have our Ash. And they're both immediately frostbitten. That is great. All right, so let's drop our Ash here. All right, so sadly, we can't actually get enough to kill this unit. And we don't want to attack with our Omen Hawk because they'll just let one of their birds die and then buff up all their, their whole board. But let's try to get this a little bit lower. Yeah, they have a ton of units immediately, which is not great for us. All right, we will put this one here. Should get two strikes off. I mean, if so, Stalker's Blade is on top on one side, but on like over here, Stalker. Oh, it's switched. That's it's on the bottom over here, but then when we pull it up, it's on the top there and bottom here. So Ragnar's Mark is probably going to go off first, which could kill Aurelia. I think let's go for Rhyme Fang. This is actually perfect. They've now made that unit the strongest unit, so it is going to get Frostbitten. So we can attack. This unit's going to get Frostbitten, killed by the Rhyme Fang. Yeah, we can attack like this. Also, adding in a ranked mode. <laughs> adding in a ranked mode to a game that has like pay to win or pay for power isn't really great. <laughs> That's not really a good idea. Like, I think already the ranked mode that or the the leaderboards of the monthly challenges some of the people high on that leaderboard have paid a ton of money to have a very like kitted out deck where if you're trying to go for rank one in the leaderboard, you're going to just go up against people that have stronger decks because they bought or stronger roster because they've just paid a lot of money. So having in ranked systems like that isn't great in this sort of environment. I think let's drop the Crystal Arrow and then go for our Aurelia so that she can hopefully get two hits off and then not die. 
Uh, I think the battle pass used to cost ten dollars. I think. All right, please get two hits off before you die. Okay, thank you. Um. Yeah, we could have actually had this with his challenger grab one of their other units and then Ash kill their one of their other ones. Oh well. So yeah, this is pretty much what we're trying to do is just constantly clear their entire board of units and also ending the game. GG. Can confirm battle pass costs 10 euros. Uh, when I was getting it. Yeah, I think it's just like $10, which for the stuff that's in there, at least for the old battle pass, even with there being other like stuff that's more focused on PvP, like wild cards and stuff, even with that being in there, it was still worth it. And now with the game focusing on Path of Champions, where you would think everything in the battle pass would be for Path of Champions, like... If they keep it the same price, which we don't know if they will, but most people just do $10 for a battle pass. If they would do that, then it would probably be worth it. Frostbite enemy with three or less health. A lot of times this won't be able to, the enemy is going to be too strong. So I think we'll just go here. We do somewhat lack draw. Iceborn, spell shield. We could actually go for, like, Consuming Wrath on Aurelia just so she, like, nukes two targets, which is kind of funny. But I think let's just go for simple Spell Shield on our Ash, give us a little bit more survivability. Let's go for Jagged Butcher. Battle Pass giving a note for Crystal at the final level would be nice. It would, but I don't know... I feel like if they did that, they'd probably increase the pi the price of the battle pass. Because, like, one Nova Crystal... Right now, they're very hard to get, and then getting, like... They're probably not going to give you one complete one every single month. Especially because throughout the battle pass, there's probably going to be... Other shards and stuff. There's probably going to be, like silver star vessels probably gold star vessels or just like standalone crystals like here is 10 bilge water the like crystal fragments shards or whatever so maybe what they would do is throughout the battle pass they would have like a bunch of shards throughout that maybe all together adds up to one complete nova crystal i could see that but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, this is okay. Uh, hey, Toast, quick question. How many gemstone upgrades do you have? Do you have any? I think I have two. Yeah, I think I only have two of them. Uh, let's, yeah, drop our Ash. Well, I like dropping our Omen Hawk first. All right, so we can attack, kill that unit. If this one blocks, it'll then also die. I doubt we'll get a Nova Crystal. It's sold in the shop for 75 each. So either we get a $50 battle pass or we forget about getting one for $10. <laughs> yeah, I kind of doubt I would love it at just like the very end that like if there was a hundred tiers at the very end, it was then like one complete Nova Crystal. But especially if they're going to keep it at like $10, which again, we don't know that they are. But most, if you look at most games that have battle passes, most of them all cost $10. That's the general consensus. 
So if Riot did that, that would be kind of nuts to give an entire Nova Crystal. Uh, let's drop our Aurelia, get two nice strikes off here, especially since they're both Frostbitten. Alright, that's just popping Spell Shield. Let's do a Flawless Duet. So we potentially will be able to end right here. So yeah, when, since we're ending, we won't grab this unit to kill him. We'll just do our damage. Nice. Uh, shatter, that'll be nice. It's free. This is also another, another reason to get the slow but steady, because this is another really good slow spell. Uh, but yeah, we can grab this here. Uh, let's hit up the shop. Will they give it to us again? No. Your spells and skills deal two extra damage. That would increase the damage of our shatter. And that's about it. So, I think let's do a reroll. Attachment or equipment. We don't have any of that. Feels bad. <laughs> we already have Overwhelm. All right, come on, one more. All right, Enfeebling, sure. Enfeebling does actually work with Ash decently well. I think let's not bother. Right, let's go for the healer. Let's give it a Defiant Dance, it's too expensive, and Karma. Ever dabbled in League? I played League when it first came out for like five or so years. All right, let's... get rid of these. Even though they're good, we just want to be sure we draw our Ash. Of course, they start with Karma. So the bad thing is, she's going to go through any of our spell shields. Let's drop Aurelia immediately. She's going to get two strikes off, and since they don't have anyone or any power, it's just going to do a lot of damage, so that's nice. All right, let's drop this. We don't want them to immediately kill our Ash. Oh, so yeah, buff up. Buff up your unit, that's great. All right. Yeah, we'll not frostbite them at first. We'll let them block and then we'll frostbite them just so we can get them off the board. So we actually leveled up from Karma being set down to zero power, even though she was already there. Interesting. All right, let's go for a Flawless Duet, just for some more damage, I guess. All right, we're fine. Yeah, the Enfeebling has some good synergies with with Ash. Uh, let's go for... 
crystal arrow here. Let's immediately hit that with a frostbite. All right, so let's go ahead and attack. Be able to block with some or like one of their units, but this will potentially just be game. Because they can only block with their one Poro. Nice, GG. The issue with Arcane Hype is that PNZ doesn't have big gun characters, maybe other than Warwick and Singe. So as long as they focus on Arcane, there won't be any big hype around character releases. I mean, I think a lot of people would love to play Victor. I think Heimerdinger would be interesting. I think... I mean, anytime there's going to be a new character, there's going to be some hype around it. Uh, let's go for Farsight, make sure we get our Ash immediately. Quick draw. Sure, we can grab this here. Oros or Healer. Don't really care about Poros. Let's go for a Monkey Idol. So far, this build is working pretty well. Consistently getting our Ash on the board immediately, and then just controlling the board, shutting the enemy down. Yeah, it's going pretty well. Uh, let's... Oh, we can play this for free. Nice. So I think we will kill that one and then be able to attack here. Depending on who they block, we'll use a Flash Freeze. Nice. Uh, we could damage that unit. I think we're fine. Yeah, I think anything they add with the arcane update, even if it's just champions we've already seen, the hype from arcane is just going to be huge, so it kind of doesn't matter. I know I could have flash freeze before attacking so they couldn't block. I wanted them to block so we could get more scaling. <laughs> that was intentional. All right, frostbite their whole board right here. Aurelia can get two kills right here, which would be great. Both of them will scale her up a bit. All right, so good amount of damage, but we are not quite ending. So we can put that right there to scale this one up. Well, yeah, scale up a little bit more. These frostbites are so satisfying. Yeah, the big thing, though, is making sure the enemy doesn't get too many units, which is why we're taking the time to, if we're not ending, kill so some of their units because if they just get too many on the board and you keep ignoring them then you just get overwhelmed but right, this should just be gg
We need more Zahn. I hope Twitch and Zach are coming this month to Path Champions. Man, Twitch. I have I've not played Twitch in a while. Twitch was a fun champion. I know one time I like made a Twitch smurf and just went into like low level games and absolutely destroyed everyone. <laughs> Uh, Twitch is a funny champion. He's just hilarious. Um, we don't really want to necessarily grab our Aurelia because we want more copies of our Ash. Although Ash has guaranteed draw, right? Didn't we get that? Yes. All right. Getting more copies of Aurelia then. Not bad. All right. Let's cut the Alpha Wildclaw. It's just too expensive. We're trying to go for an early game aggro control deck. Uh, Caught in the Cold is nice. Slow gives them vulnerable. Rhyme Tusk isn't bad, but is expensive. Frost by two enemies. Refill your spell mana. That will be nice. Making them discard. Rekindler. There is a shop there, so we don't necessarily want to spend too much. I think I'm willing to get this one though harsh winds is okay but i think we have enough control that we're probably fine let's save the money for the shop up here so let's go for scythria i just hope we're going to see a victor small pve rework to make him more than another keyword soup champion it will be interesting to see what they do with victor definitely because he is going to be fighting fighting several other champions to feel unique. Because he kind of is like a mix of like Aurelian Soul and Echo with their created cards, but then also a mix of all the keyword soup champions. So it's it's going to be hard to differentiate him. I, I have faith in the Riot devs, though. They've been knocking it out of the park recently. All right, so we will drop our Ash. They'll play another unit. It'll get Frostbitten. Oh, that one actually... That one counted for both Frostbites. Interesting. Well, then, we will attack first. Kill this unit. Frostbite their other one. Actually, we kind of want Aurelia on the attack. So let's Frostbite this first. That way we can play Aurelia. Well. Uh, I guess we'll just attack. We don't really want to waste the rally. Man, they just keep playing zero-cost units. That is annoying. I think we might save Aurelia for another turn. Because she's not even going to get a kill. So we'll drop Omen Hawk here. Alright, so sadly we don't have any of our other Frostbites. I think we'll go here. They can potentially buff up and kill our Ash, which would be sad. But yeah, we haven't had any of our instant cast frostbites. Oh, barrier. That's annoying. Alright, perfect. We wanted to give this one vulnerable. We don't have a lot of cards left, which is nice. Alright, so we can drop our Aurelia. Alright. 
one down. And then we can kill this one so it doesn't transform into a better version. All right, that's good. Otherwise, the units were going to start getting a little bit out of control. Ah, uh, sure. We'll blade dance because we have the mana. We might as well. Uh, not quite enough to end. <laughs> uh, is a decent amount of damage. Sure. We're going to waste one of our frostbites, but it's kind of funny. All right, GG. The entire Sunny followers, because I can't use the V word, is going to be screaming of happiness. What if they play Victor? Does Sunny really like Victor? Not to mention, Victor will get uh, rework, but they'll have to have it hidden, even though Kate is out of the bag at this point. So it's most likely instead of an existing card, that would be to match the new Path of Champions card to newer version, just because Arcane, so he won't be announced till December. Yes, he really likes Victor. Okay. Hmm. Zillion, Victor, Zoe, his entire viewership loves them. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Uh, let's go for Winter's Breath. This is pretty fun. Always a good one for Ash. If we did get the slow but steady, this would have been great to have. I mean, there's still hope right here. Gearing up two armed gearheads. It's fine. But let's try to see if we can get something better. Stacked against, and that's okay. We don't have... <sighs> Too many cards, though. We need five more cards in order to trigger it, which we're not going to be able to do. Because, yeah, I don't think we'll be able to... I mean, I guess we just spam bought some stuff in here, but... Oh, well, it'll just be one cost reduction. Not a big deal. Let's go for the healer. Honestly, we can get rid of the Ribbon Dancer. Yeah, just the entire support package of Aurelia. Aurelia's good, the rest we don't care about. All right, Jinx. Yeah, we could have bought a bunch of stuff. We pretty sure we're out of rerolls. But we didn't want to just spam a bunch of stuff. Let's. Yeah, that's actually fine. To be fair, Sonny's career jump started from videos of those champions, it makes sense. Huh. Yeah, I never really watched him, so I, to be honest, <laughs> have no idea anything about how his career took off, but that's, that's cool. Uh, let's drop a Relia to just immediately kill their, their Jinx. Uh, yeah, we can go for Omen Hawk. All right, let's go ahead and attack. Yeah, we'll just bank these for later.
All right, so we could just immediately go for Winter's Breath. Although, it would go up to a seven cost. We'd still be able to play it. Yeah, let's try to do Crystal Arrow first and then drop the Winter's Breath. They'll potentially play some more units because Jinx likes playing those. Oh. Add drops, we're going to hold off before we nuke their entire board. Don't want anyone to miss anything. Yeah, Arcane Season 1, I don't remember it doing anything for Glorious Evolution. Like, it it shows stuff with Victor, but it doesn't show him doing anything with part of that, like, cult. That being said, it has been a while since I watched it. I'm going to be rewatching it again shortly. Jace is overhated, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. I'm not, like, a fan of Jace, but I would definitely say that... Yeah, people... It's probably overdone. Alright, everyone should be back. Let's go ahead and drop the Winter's Breath, killing most of their units, frostbiting those that remain. Thank you for dropping that. Oh, that would have been great if we had... I always want to say Curtain Call, but it's... Explosive Finale. <laughs> Alright, some solid damage. We'll just... Okay. Uh, attack next round and end the game. Alright, that should be GG. Yep, still GG. <laughs> Alright, that was actually a pretty fun Ash build. Granted that Domination was probably the perfect thing for us to be able to get. Alright, that was a pretty fun Ash build. Early game Ash is pretty good, especially with this sort of setup. Overwhelm, the earlier in the game you have it, the better it is. Later on in the game, it can be a little bit more uh, useless, but especially early on, it helps scale up your units from your second star. Very nice. Granted, the domination is pretty much the perfect thing to get for this build, so we can constantly be attacking and leveraging the fact that we have Ash on the board immediately. But overall, solid. Do I think this is going to be like the best Ash build? No, definitely not. But if you want a early like aggro control build, I think this is a fun play style. All right, I think. Let's look at Darius. And kind of wondering we could throw in a loaded dice for more rerolls and chance to find epic powers and items which is good we can go for a stacked deck because for one buffing up uh, Darius's just all of his units is great but then also I mean starting golds so you're more likely to well, you have the money to try to buy some of these epic powers and items I mean, we could do Beast Within for the guaranteed Overwhelm, although most of our units are going to have Overwhelm anyways. All 
I'm just trying to think what else we want to throw on. Like, we could go for some cost reduction, so we're more likely to actually play him. But this is a more passive build, so we don't necessarily care about playing him. We could actually go for Hidden Tome, because this would help our support champion. So it would still be helping them and not actually need Darius. Uh, Frozen Tomb Darius... Normally, you're going to end before it ever goes off. We could go for uh, Seasoned Assist because this can trigger when Darius is leveled. So we could go for Seasoned Assist in order so that if the game is going longer, we then drop our Darius. But... Six mana is quite a lot. Could go for Hidden Tome to help our support champion, because just focus on your support champion is a very valid strategy. Could go for, like, Packed Powder for more scaling and damage. <coughs> I do Packed Powder and Seasoned Assist. Yes, but we only have one spot available. Because there's a lot of other builds that do focus on actually playing Darius, but we only have one spot open because we're going to try both of these two. Let's take a look at our starting deck. So we do have Death's Hand. And Bloody Business. So yeah, we don't really have a lot of spells. Death's Hand does have extra damage here. I think we'll go for Season Desist, just so that if the game does go longer, we can actually drop our Darius, but he is going to be more passive. We might never play him. The main thing is stack deck and loaded dice. Again, we're probably going to focus on our support champion. What's the best relic, rare relics for Aesol? Uh, Crown Guard Inheritance, so that you can immediately rally when you play him. And then Deceiver's Crest, so you can nuke the board again when you play him. I'm getting close to my first 6-star power. Should I go Talia or Viego? Uh, Viego, 100%. Viego is so good. Alright, let's grab this and just try it. I guess we, we should adjust the title. Uh, sure. Alright, so... We'll grab our Darius. I think we'll just, again, potentially go through... Uh, that Nightmare to see how it goes. This will be... Interesting. We do have, actually, the cost reduction, so that's actually going to be nice. Alright, let's see what we get for our first power here. Draw a card, give allies one power. This could be good. Helps us hit our threshold for doing our rally. So sure. We could use some of our rerolls here, but... I mean, we could try to get, like, Titanic Wake. But this is pretty good. I don't really like rerolling when we have a good power. Normally only when we get, like, a bad one. So I think we'll save some of the rerolls for later. Right, let's go for Mist Wraith. We're potentially going to need to use a lot of rerolls when we get to support champion. Uh, we'll get rid of Darius. We know we're going to draw him. 
also one thing pretty crazy i don't have it yet but in the constellation you can get your legion uh grenadier or grenadier grenadier whatever uh to get mana potion so it goes down to a one cost having that with spirit stone is crazy especially because later like, you get any more cost reduction on it and then you can just have an infinite combo I think let's drop this just to have a blocker for that mist wraith because we don't want to use some of our better units all right let's drop this because there's a big attack pool yeah drawing those cards is is nice So we could attack, we would get a rally, we could then drop Darius, sure. Drain six, oof. All right, so our Darius would not trigger his level up. So his cease and desist wouldn't proc. So that'd be bad. Yeah, I think we'll wait and do that another round. Let's drop our Iron Ballista. I think we'll probably save the bloody business for a another round. We're out of mana, actually, so we can just pump a little bit more damage. Let's go ahead and drop Darius and see if we can end the game. Ah, oh, we we wanted them to do some action so we could drop a bloody business. So we could hit their unit that was blocking and then have enough damage. Oh well. GG. Probably. Yep, still GG. The fact that it's stuck behind the 6 stone or 150 gemstone upgrade is so unbased. Yeah, I guess it is right there. That's true, yeah. That is something they have been improving, though. They have made a lot of the constellations a lot better and not having stuff locked behind other things. Because, uh, yeah, that is something that was definitely an issue. Uh, Noxian Merchant. Free attack is decent, but one cost, Farsight, Overwhelm. I do kind of like this unit. That is a lot of stats, though, on a three cost. Yeah, I think I'll actually grab that. It's going to be very easy to trigger our rally with that card. All right, Azir, Reckoner's Mark, and Pickaxe. Renekton also with Reckoner's Mark. <coughs> so Renekton's actually going to be more likely to die... because he's not gonna have that much health. Azir though is gonna be having, well, I guess the same amount of health, but we can play him on our first turn. I think let's actually go Renekton. We're probably gonna build around the support champion, not the other units. So yeah, we can build around Renekton, try to get him a little bit cheaper. 
Yeah, I like Renekton. Let's go here. You seem cough a lot. Get well soon. I mean, yeah, I've been sick for the past while. Uh, let's go for the champion item chest. So, Dawn Speakers. Yeah, still unfortunately sick. Let's give her the Death's Hand and the Affectionate Poro. And keep the Thorn of the Rose. Yeah, I haven't actually done a passive Darius build in a while. It's going to be fun building around the support champion again. Uh, let's go for the Iron Ballista. So it's like we can attack and try to do damage to their Nexus. We could kill the Fleet Feather Tracker, but that's going to buff up their board. But the Fleet Feather Tracker is going to be able to kill us regardless. Yeah, sure. Let's go for the Grenadier. Dropping this as a blocker isn't bad, even though we miss out on the, the proc. Uh, sure. We'll reduce down some damage we're taking. So yeah, them, they're still going to buff each other up, but it's not as bad when there's just the two of them and they don't have other units to also hit. Let's go for the smash and dash just because it's going to be massive. All right, let's go for two power. Uh, do we want to pop a spell shield? Yeah, because I think we'll try to kill that Dawn Speaker. Although, I was thinking that we would attack like this, but we'd have this unit die. And since we're going to get the rally, we probably actually want to go here. So they can block with this Dawn Speaker to reduce down our damage. But we'll be able to kill them next round, or next attack, because we're about to rally. So yeah, I think let's actually attack like this. And then here we can kill the Dawn Speaker and potentially their Stony Suppressor. Yeah, that's not bad. Alright, so they have one unit left. We could drop our Darius right away if we wanted. Sure. All right, GG. Yeah, the Season Desist is a nice finisher right now. Granted, we want to be getting our Renekton, but still, it's solid. So, Precious Pet, Barrier, Good Stats, Quicksand, making the enemy discard and reduce down the keywords. I don't think I'd rather go here, to be honest. Let's grab that. Let's go for Champion Item. I think let's go for Anti-Up on our Renekton, so we can drop him turn one. 
and then hopefully since it's turn one nothing's going to be able to stand up to his uh reckoner's mark if we just get him one more power after that we could drop him he gets a strike off and then levels before he even attacks actually he still might have that happen if he procs the darius star power all right let's go for jagged butcher yeah, it is actually fun with Darius focusing on your other champion, because normally it just gets crazy. I guess that's actually one thing we can do. We can turn the... the dialogue back up. We had it turned off because of Nico. This is actually okay. Well, let's get rid of the Legion Grenadier. Yeah, we like having our... Arvanectin. Hopefully he can survive. Yeah, I don't think most things should have above seven stats. Seven power. Alright, yeah, perfect. So the Darius star power triggers first. Servanectin so is leveled before he even attacks. Uh, if we get him, like, just one more power, he could rally with this attack. Actually, he's going to rally with this attack because he buffed himself. Oh, my word. This is fantastic. All right, we're doing this just so that they can't block and reduce down this damage. We're going to end in the first turn. This is the fun thing you can do with Darius. GG. Oh, man. It's been a while since I've played Darius like this. It's so fun. Uh, let's go for Glory Seeker. That's a pretty good card. Big Croc starts and wins. Yes. All right. So strength numbers still a little bit pricey. Game starts on Emperor's Dias. Let's do a reroll. I think I'd want to get something a little bit better than that. We summon an ally, granted fury, it's dragon. No, I think I'm good. Sure. When you summon an ally, give it 1-1. One, one. This can help us to be able to trigger our uh, rally, especially if we play multiple units. So far, though, we're using multiple rerolls and not getting any epics, which is a little sad. I think. We could use a reroll here. I think we're fine, though. I think I want to use them for our champion node after Karma and then the powers node right there. All right, let's go for. Well, actually, we kind of don't want to cut cards because of our stack deck. Is there anything really worth cutting? Yeah, we're not going to bother. We need our stack deck to go off. So, yeah, we'll heal, which is kind of nothing because we didn't miss any health. Let's go for Karma. Karma might be strong enough to kill our Renekton. What you expect? A perfect mana flow? I mean, it would be nice. Let's get rid of this one. The extra draw could be good on the Assessor, especially since we're starting with the 10 mana. Aw, oh, we didn't draw. We didn't draw a Renekton, sad. Alright, let's go for our Iron Ballista. My path is clear. An open heart teaches more than open eyes. Okay, that's not bad. That is bad. If only we could have Ruthless Predators like slot right in between these two. Ah, uh, that is unfortunate.
Uh, this could actually help us a bit. Because this is going to have a straw, which is going to buff up these two. Oh, so now we see Redacted. Uh, so we could play him, but he would immediately die. Which is a little frustrating. I think let's attack like this. Let's use our vulnerable. Oh, our next is going to be free. Uh, so yeah, we'll attack like this, get our rally going. We'll probably drop our free Renekton after. Alright, he's going to get discarded. I feel like might as well. Alright, but we could go and kill Karma. So, sure. Well, yeah, keep the other one back for now. Pretty good opening hand. Not bad. All right, so we'll drop the assessor. It'll give us a little bit more draw. Let's drop this for blockers. Ah, oh, they're not attacking. All right, I guess let's kill at least that. And yeah, we can drop a thorn of the rose. Alright, so we will attack. We'll be able to get a rally going. We can then attack again and drop our Darius. Your attack is obvious. Nice. Darius four star actually being useful. Yes. Alright, GG. Darius's four star is stunning the strongest enemy. Uh, hold it, I think it is called. Yeah, hold it. Close to our cat. Uh, let's see. Summon draw one elusive bonded bucklers. We'd actually just like to get some more stats on him. Let's do a reroll here. Okay, 3-1 Colossal Hammer. So he's just going to kill whatever he hits. Slightly more likely to survive. Going to do a ton of damage. Nice. All right. Higher education, again, is kind of funny. Overprepared. This isn't bad. But I would really love to see something like Titanic Wake. Ooh. So Domination Round Start Rally is very nice. Evolution gives us a good amount of keywords. Our Renekton, it's really only going to give one. Potentially two when he gets Challenger. I guess yeah, if he gets Challenger, which doesn't really generate. So it's like helping further scale up all of our units or just being able to attack every round. I think we'll go for the domination, even though evolution is very good. Yeah, I think we'll go here. Poros or healer. It's kind of difficult because we don't really care about Poros and we don't also really care about the healer. I think we want to save our gold for the shops up here. So let's go down here and I guess heal if we need to. Let's go for Monkey Idol. Or 
Taurus and give us the rally, and they also get the buff. Potentially, I just know that the Poro, that power, is like 500 gold, and I want to spend that gold on other things. But yes, we could have used it to try to fill out our board a little bit more. Uh, Chrono, thank you for the follow. Same with Gamer in Chief. Uh, ad happened, so we're just going to pause and chill for a moment. If you're not in the ad, go to the bathroom, go get a drink. You have a minute. Nice, we have our Renekton. Oh, I really hope they add Renekton as a champion. He's so much fun to play. He'd be very simple and straightforward, but fun. He'd be like another brawler champion like Darius or Garen. Oh, do we need the uh, assessor? Well, the extra draw actually gives us a lot of extra power, so I guess we will. Hold on to it. We just need to get like free attack on our connected. <laughs> Although I guess that will override our rally, so it's not actually that needed. Oh. Renekton would love the vulnerable power as a four star, unlike Voli. That is true. That would actually be very nice to have. Right, I'm actually fine with this. So they should just have a monkey idol, which shouldn't have a lot of stats. Although they'll probably also have a monkey as well. Yeah, six power. Quite a lot. All right, so we'll be able to attack, rally, attack again, and end the game. Be nothing left when I'm done. Put them down. Face your end. Ah, GG. Love it. I wonder if one day the line they'll revisit old constellations and change things that don't really work out. Uh, they've done that before. Yeah, they've they've slightly tweaked old ch uh, champions and they kind of reworked Thresh, so they do already do that. It just doesn't happen that often. A quick attack on this is kind of crazy. Yeah, we don't really want to cut a card because we're trying to get our stack deck to give us a couple stats. Right, let's go here for the shop, and let's actually leave to see our right, epic shop, rekindler. So we don't want to go crazy with stuff, with buying stuff. Slow but steady. Do we care about slow spells? No. We keep seeing this with the people that don't need it, which is very sad. Right, let's try reroll. We could reroll more, but this is solid. We probably want to save our rerolls for the epic shop. Yeah, I think I'll just stick with Welcome Gifts. It's fine. Now let's go up here for the Epic Shop. So, Scythria. Yeah, as long as we draw Renekton, I think we should be good. Although, if they drop that barrier unit again, that'll be bad. Yeah, Welcome Gifts is generally good. I do like the Quicksand. Let's... Reroll most things. Although, problem with quicksand, while I like it, we can't play this with our Renekton. Like, not turn one. The Death's Hand, we actually can. <coughs> Oof, no Renekton, sad. Sure. 
Guess we can drop this here. Regen, that's actually decent. I love a taste of the action. Two power and vulnerable. We don't really need the vulnerable. Extra power. I mean, the storm calling could be good for future units, but nah, I think we'll just go here. Huh. Okay. I mean, yes, you're killing our units, but you're letting our unit kill both of yours, which seems fine. <laughs> I guess we'll drop our thorn. Alright, so we'll go for the death sand to uh, proc their barrier. Our stack deck is still just 1 1. Yeah, we won't get the extra stats on this, but we can drop this and try to get an attack in. Yeah, the Welcome Gifts is giving us some pretty good, pretty good stuff here. Oh, look, Renekton. Uh, yeah, we'll drop him right away. All right, this will give us a rally. All right, GG. Guess they just gave up or had really bad luck. The slaughter will never end. All right, Epic Shop. Let's see what we can get. So far, the extra rerolls from Loaded Dice is nice, but we haven't really noticed getting offered like a crazy amount of Epic and Legendary things. Here's a couple, though. We're probably not going to get either one, but that is actually several epics. This would have been great if we did get the evolution, because it would have been another keyword. But I think we're fine. Let's try to get something better. Target an ally with a single target spell. Copy it on your weakest. That would work if we wanted to use our Ruthless Predator. This going off twice would be... Actually, it's not even really single target, because you also target an enemy. Yeah, let's reroll again. Summon an ally, grant its keyword to all allies. That's fine. Rather get something else. Okay, Grander Plaza, finally. <laughs> something good. So this is a massive stat pool, but it is a five cost. That's a little much. Three cost Reckless Trifarian with Scout, though. Sure, we can go ahead and grab, uh, grab that. For every 12 cards in your deck, past 18. Five cost, five cost. Scorched Earth's not bad, actually. Uh, sure. Yeah, so... At 42, I think we should be... Should be good. We just need to not cut anything. Yeah, we'll just heal for zero health, and let's go for Jinx. I like you. <laughs> yeah, the stack deck is fine here. Hasn't really... Hasn't paid off a crazy amount. But if you're going for a passive build, it is still solid.
We'll see what triggers first for the stats. Nice. He survived. So yeah, without the stack deck, we would have died. Uh, Glory Seeker. This isn't going to have the Overwhelm. Still, though, getting rid of another target's not bad. I need just a moment. All right, so we can attack, get a rally going. And then we're not going to grab this over here. And GG. Oh, maybe not. Nope. Yeah, close. We can drop a death's hand next round, though. Hi, right, GG. Ah, oh, that was fun. Savagely incarnate forever. Yeah, great Renekton run. <laughs> All right, that was a lot of fun. Always great to do the kind of passive reroll build for Darius and just focus on another champion. Renekton is one of those champions that is fantastic just to build up and support. As far as what we had for our Darius, the stack deck was a decent passive relic, was able to give us 2-2 two -two as far as stats at the very end there. The extra gold was nice. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's not like it's amazing, but it's it's solid. Lets you trigger your second star power a little bit a little bit faster. The other one for giving us the increased chance to get epic items didn't seem that noticeable. Like the rerolls were very noticeable. Having three rerolls for one relic is very good. But that's since it's just increasing your chance to get something, you're still not guaranteed to get it. So is going to be a bit more hit or miss, but it's still more rerolls on one relic than you can get anywhere else. So if you're trying to go for a reroll build, it's still worth grabbing. But yeah, very fun. Been a long time since I've done this sort of run, and it's good time. Oh, that was solid. I think, yeah, next up we'll do probably Kindred. I haven't done Kindred in a minute. But I think that's where we'll uh, call it for today. Gotta go edit these together and try to find enough time to do my monthly challenge guide for this month. But thank you all for hanging out. Uh, we'll be streaming again uh, tomorrow. Same time. Hope to see you there. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. See ya.